so I decided to experiment with Godot for the first time. I've made a 2D prototype and then started making a 3D test game to see how it performs. I started this journey by following along a couple of 2D game tutorials. They taught me a lot about how the engine works and were a great way to understand how Godot likes to do things. How to make use of signals to make interactions between objects and how to handle bigger scenes and transitions. Next, it was time to do something myself. I usually don't make 2D games anymore because I absolutely can't do 2D art, but here we go anyways. I started the project using a tile map to make the ground and walls, and made the player walk and throw a rock with the mouse, along with a few particle effects. Next, I used the tile map's custom data to make the move speed change based on what tile the player is on, moving slower in the sand and even slower on water. Finally, I made a simple enemy and made it react to the rocks and die. Overall, using Godot for 2D is very fun. It's an absolute joy to use animations player, and it's very fast to prototype and polish the games in it. Now, let's start the 3D. Godot 4 has had some great advancements in 3D, both to performance and graphics quality, making it now a viable choice for 3D games. So I'm excited to see how it turns out. I decided that I wanted to make a game taking place in the desert, where the player would control a ship moved by wind to transverse it. So my first idea was to use a car controller and adjust the grip strength to make it control like a boat. Godot already has a car and wheel controllers, so I tested that. It worked quite well, it was easy to set up and there were a lot of parameters to configure it the way I wanted it. But after playing with it for a while, I decided to make my own instead and take this chance to test how Godot 3D physics works. At first, I tried to use joints. Unfortunately, Godot does not have a spring joints like Unity. So I tried a few types it has, but it did not go so well. Eventually, I found out that I could get a spring-like joint movement by using the generic joints. But it was still quite difficult to get the movement the way I wanted, and it had tons of parameters. So I decided to implement the forces manually myself. It was also a good chance to really see how the physics works. And that's when things really started to go downhill. I implemented a ray cast suspension system. This works by shooting a ray at the position where the wheel should be and applying forces there depending on how close the ray is to its rest distance, which simulates how a spring works. It was very easy to implement and get a simple version of it right. That is, until I started moving. The car would just give up on life on the slightest turn or gain a life of its own on a crazy spin, breaking physics completely. I started adding many debug force lines and numbers to try and understand what was wrong. I fixed some of the math, and that made things a little better. But I still had no luck solving some issues. Things still wasn't feeling quite right. It was very wobbly, and sometimes the suspension would just start slowly going in the wrong direction, as if to taunt me. And it seems rotating in place was enough to make things look crazy. So I added some wheels to help visualize what was happening. The suspension seems to work perfectly when standing still, so the problem was not there. But things broke when any rotation was applied. And then I finally found the problem. Turns out Goto uses local position and rotations on child objects by default, which is the opposite of Unity. So by changing the rotations to global, I can now finally turn the car around. That made things better, but I was still having some stability issues when jumping. So I tried to use Jolt physics instead. And while the physics became more stable, I still had some other problems to deal with. I noticed some very weird behavior. Just by putting the plane in a rotated position, physics would not work anymore, and the car simply would not turn after a certain point. Also making physics all wonky. This got me stuck for two days trying to figure it out. I reworked the physics and tried some other approaches thinking the math was somehow wrong. And then I finally found the issue. For whatever reason, Godot apply force at position method uses a global offset position. And while I read that, I thought it was a local offset because that made more sense at the time. Use the position of the child object when you want to apply forces at the location. But doing that made it so the position ignores the rotation of the parent, which was what was causing all those problems. This global offset position make it very awkward to calculate in most common use cases. In comparison, other game engines use a global position which is much more convenient and easy to understand. Anyways, fixing this, the car is now finally working and I can properly turn it anywhere I wanted. 
but then I decided to scrap all that and go for a simpler approach. So I started the project again and strapped two capsules onto the body and just moved the body with forces, no complicated physics. Using only forward forces to control it made it very slippy. So I used what I learned previously and applied some of the car's steering technique to the boat. I basically used the floaters the same way as a car wheels, where it applies a drag force in the opposite direction to turn. And with this, I can control how much I want it to slide. Finally, I decided I need to add some graphics. So I made some small procedural drums in Blender and baked it into a mesh to use in game. I imported it into Godot and added it to the scene. But things were not looking very pretty. Because it was quite low poly and with no normal maps, the dunes were blending in together and felt more like a plane. So after looking around in the material options, I added some marine light and that improved things a bit. So now it was time to test drive the boat on the dunes. Seems okay, but let's increase the max speed a little. That's much better. I still need to work on the movement later, but I will leave that for now so I can start making some gameplay. But before that, I also wanted to change the player, so I made a simple zoom boat model in Blender. And put that model in the game. Here's how it looks moving. That's okay for now. So next, I'm going to need some enemies. I started prototyping an enemy base just so we can have something to shoot at. And after a quick blender session, now I have two enemy bases to test. I added the weapons to the player and now it can shoot too. Then I added the on blink animation to the bases with the animation player and made them able to be destroyed. Finally, it was time to make the enemy attack back. Here I found a problem. I needed to make the rotation pivot for the cannon, but it seems, unlike Unity's prefab variants, you can't change inherited scene nodes' positions. I'll need to split this model later, but for now, let's just hide the original and add a new node. And now all that's left is make the enemy aim at the player. Easy. Or maybe not. Trying to find out the right angle to shoot at has led me to some severe flashbacks of physics exams. It's funny how what I needed is exactly the answer to a physics exam question. So after relearning a lot of physics and adapting some formulas to work in the game, I can now finally have the tower aim at the player. I can make it shoot at a higher angle, or at a lower angle. I also changed the explosion VFX for something that looks more like an explosion, which made things look a little better. And lastly, I wanted to test how shader works. Godot has its own shader language, which is very nice and easy to use, and also has a visual shader. Unfortunately, the visual shader still lacks some beginner-friendly helper nodes, like some other engines have. For example, it lacks a node to help transform vectors and positions from one space to another. While in Unity's shader graph, you'd have a node that sends you exactly what you want, or you can feed it to a node to transform in what you want. In Godot's visual shader, things are not that simple yet. This example shows the object normal vector in white when it's pointing towards the up direction. The normal is in view space, that is, based on the camera, but I want it in word space so the top is always white no matter where the camera angle is. To get this in visual shader, I need to check the manual for a correct transform matrix and use a multiplication transform to rotate the vector, which is very confusing at first for someone who doesn't know much about shaders like me. Now going back to the game. I decided to make a desert heat haze effect. It seemed very simple at the time. Similar to SSR, I added a simple distortion based on the noise map and that was it except the shader was also distorting the borders of the towers in front of it. I tried working with adept textures to mitigate these effects and a few other solutions, but none seemed to work very well, still producing some artifacts. I think I would need to use a boot camera render setup or a stencil buffer to solve this issue, but unfortunately Godot doesn't support either of those yet. I might also be wrong, I don't know all that much about shaders. And there could be another solution for the haze effect that doesn't rely on screen space to work. And that's where I am now. I'll continue to play around with this game later, but it taught me a lot about Godot and about the physics engine in general. Godot has come a long way. Before, I only believed in Godot for 2D games, but now it is starting to take shape and become interesting for 3D too. It still have a lot of rough edges and a lot of minor editor bugs and annoyances. But as future updates comes in, I'm sure this will be solved in time. The node inheritance system of Godot felt strange at first, but now it's growing on me. I love the editor ability to reset everything to its default values. 
GD script with the editor integration is very nice to use, and I can also mix some C-sharp script where performance is needed later on. Shaders still need some love, there are some missing features needed for more advanced pause effects, but the shader language was very nice to use and understand. In the end, despite all the problems I had, I quite enjoyed Godot. It might not have the performance needed for a AAA game, but for me it is enough, and I believe it will still improve in the future. I really missed having a lightweight game engine editor, so I'll continue to try a few things with it and make some tutorials about the things I learned and find interesting about it. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this kind of video. Thanks for watching, and until next time.